Hey everyone, in yesterday's video we covered Elemental's Loot Builder that you can get with version 3.8. You've got to activate the Flexbox container and the Loot Builder. This allows you now to have a lot of customized design and use dynamic fields, custom fields, things like that, to have a complete bespoke look to your post. However, I now want to talk about can we have different designs when we start to offset? Let me show you what I mean. This is one of my fake pages I use for testing and tutorial purposes and down here is the customized bespoke post archive in a way that I built yesterday. This is actually using the call to action widget alongside the loop builder or the loop grid and I just wanted to showcase how you can think outside the box and not just do header image, exert buttons, stuff like that. But what if you want to offset this? So what I mean by that is this style will be applied for post two, three, four, five, and six. Sorry, let me rephrase that. You want your latest post to have a particular design. And after that, every other post will have a completely unique style. Can you do that? In a way, yes, but it does take a tiny little bit of work. Now, I want to show you something, though, before we go further that you really need to appreciate. This is built using the loop grid, okay? You can't miss it, it's a widget, type in loop and you'll get it. When you add that to your page or anywhere else you add it, you could even add it straight into a template, it will basically say now edit template to design it. Let me show you what I mean, okay? Because if anyone's not watched yesterday's video, this is gonna sound like Google gobbledygook. If I take the loop grid and I drop that in here, you get a grid of three. Okay, don't worry, you can refine this later to have five columns, two columns, one, whatever you want. You then hit create template. Now, when you do that, it's actually going to create another template in your template archives over here. Look how many times I've got the word elemental loop item or loop archive appearing over here. Quite a few times. And when I realized this, I thought I've got to get a video out. Let me show you what I mean. If I go and hit create template, it's going to say, do you want to save before you continue? Yep, just hit save. Now down here, I can start to build my uh, secondary template. So I'm just going to stick in header for now, rather than using the post title, because I want to remind you, this is how you do dynamic stuff with custom fields, maybe. You could go in and pick a custom field, or I'm just going to pick post title like that. At the minute, it just says post three. That's the latest one. We then hit update. And now I have this row with my three posts. There's nothing else going on, no images or anything because I didn't add them in. But if I was to now click on this, okay, over here, can you see it says elemental loop item 1000? If I go over here, it's gonna say 956. And if I go over to my templates and just refresh the page, you will see 1000. And somewhere below here, you'll see 956. There you go, that one there. So. Every time you add one in here and you click edit template, it is adding it into your template library. So please bear that in mind. And when you see the word elemental loop, don't go deleting it unless you are going to go over down here to your settings cog. Sorry, not there. You got to edit the template, then go to your settings cog and you are going to rename it. I would say just be careful on your renaming and how you do that. But now let's get back onto the offsetting. So let's now create our offset template where post number three, which is the latest one, is going to have a slightly different design to everything else we see below. So let me just go into the original one and click edit template. Remember, this is going to be editing template 956, but that's neither here or there. I'm going to click that entire call to action because this is where I built it. Rather than just adding in like, you know, um, the fields that you have here with the excerpt and title and button or anything like that, I went and built it in a bespoke way. Please do watch yesterday's video if you're unsure of that and use the timestamp, okay, to make sure you watch the right bit, C2A, which is call to action. I'm just going to copy that, right? I'm just going to copy it and then I'm going to hit save and back. I'm not changing that one. I'm actually going to do it to the one below and then I'm going to rearrange it. Let me now go over here to the second one or template 1000. Let me now edit that. I'm gonna click here. I'm going to delete what we have there and I'm now gonna paste. And what I now have is a copy of my the one that I was doing before. I'm now gonna modify this style. So I'm gonna get rid of the ribbon number one like that. I'm gonna go over to my content. I already have the post title. 
and it is a you know it's using the post title there down here i have a link for the button by the way i didn't explain this in yesterday's video if you ever add any of these and you go well where i've got a button but how do i get the button to go to the right post or whatever make sure you click the dynamic tag for the button and just make sure you pick the post url um it's a little bit tricky if you were to try and find it say look if i go to here like the description and i try and find it here you're not going to find it there unless you go and put in a uh some wording and you put a link in so just be careful of that but wherever you have the link option you will find it now in the description I'm going to click the dynamic tag and I'm going to scroll down until I get to pods field click that click the spanner or the wrench and I'm going to pick the oh where's it gone there we go I'm going to pick the power field like that and I've changed the typography as well okay so that's all looking pretty simple now of course post two and one over here look really blank and plain don't worry we are actually going to get rid of them now I could do some other fancier stuff as well but I'm just going to hit update for now and when I hit save and back now that I'm going back into almost my page and I now click over here. By the way, look, can you see the bottom one has a completely different style attached, uh, applied to it? If I now click on the pencil or the edit over there, so I'm now back in my loop grid and I'm going to change this to only be one column and I only want to see one item per page. So I only want that one item. I mean, I probably do think I needed to add a bit more padding in there. Can I quickly go and do it? Let me just hit update. Look, don't worry, you'll get used to this. Let's just hit edit template. So we're back in the template, click that, go back over here. And I think that was uh, way too small. I think 20 just is a little bit better. Right, let's just hit save and back there. So we go back into where we were. Sorry about that, I just had to amend that. So if we go back to the loop grid, I've changed it to be one column and one item per page, right? Now I'm gonna click on this one here the loop grid that was above. I'm gonna leave that as three. In fact, there's only three posts, so I'm gonna change this one now to be two instead. We still have post three showing though, post two, and now post one has gone onto another row. You can choose how many items you're gonna have the page. You know, you might not reduce it to four or six or 10 or seven, whatever you wanna go for. I'm gonna go down to query, and I'm now gonna hit exclude. And I am going to say offset by one. That means the latest post is not shown. If you put offset three, none of my posts would be visible because the first three would now be not shown. If you put a two, the first, the latest two would not be shown. Of course, that all depends on how you've sorted it. Mine is in date descending order. So if I now update that, can you now see we've got post three? post two and post one, completely custom designs. I'm gonna go over to my navigator and I'm gonna just rearrange those like that. So there is so much more fun you can have with this. And please do remember, okay, you will have these extra templates created. Make sure you don't go deleting them, otherwise you're gonna lose the work you're doing. But I just used the call to action widget. You didn't have to use that. You could have uh, just put in a standard layout, like I said before, with your post, your excerpt, your button. You could put the image on the side or wherever you wanna do it. But this for me completely, in my opinion, removes the need for a lot of third party plugins that you might have been using and you can keep it all under one roof. I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow and keep watching. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the pack.